Check this yeah. out. I don't know if you can tell. Can you see this giant red splotch right here? Yeah. Yeah, that's poison oak. I was going to say, it's, <laughs> is it tis the, se tis the season for poison oak? Oh, my God. It's it's out of control. It's everywhere. Yes. Is there nothing you can do to eradicate it? Isn't there some, like, natural, um, you know, like, herbicides? The problem is, is, like, it's just everywhere and you don't know it until it's too late because it's just mixed in with all the other stuff. And I've been doing a ton of work outside, tons and tons and tons of like mowing and weed whacking and stuff. Right. So, um, like I would have to kill everything. You, you need, <laughs> kill you need, it all. well, I was going to say, I mean, there is the scorched earth pots, you know, there, there is the yeah. possibility. Yeah. yeah. Light it up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can have totally. helicopters. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> <laughs> totally. <laughs> oh, it's kind of itchy, especially when this this headphone wire keeps touching it. Put that behind me. I would say, yeah, like loop. Put it somewhere else. Yeah. Jeez. So, how long has it been since we like actually recorded one of these? It's been a few weeks. Yeah. A month. Yeah. I don't even know. At least yeah. a month. I think so. Yeah. It's been a little bit going on. Busy for for all, right? I don't even yeah. want to get into it, man. I don't. Need... <laughs> no. What, what, what do you got? What do you got for me? <laughs> well, I will say, I get to start my first new project, and I say new as in like you know, it wasn't one that I worked on and then went away from it and then came back to it. Oh, because... that's right. You went on a you went on a three hour tour. I did. <laughs> I did. So I finally, so I finally got uh, put on a new project, probably mostly because I was whining about the fact that if we go after these projects, which we did, and we get them, which we did, and we get that particular project, I want to be on it. Like, please let me be on it, and I am. And so, uh, it's a. I mean, it's not a lot. It, in fact, it goes. You, know, you go from like doing the biggest project currently in the office. In fact, two of the biggest projects in the office, both budget wise and size wise to probably one of the smallest projects in the office. Like it, there's no comparison size wise. I mean, it's just like big fish in the sea to little teeny minnow. And you know what? I couldn't be happier to be on a little minnow project <laughs> I need yeah. the respite and, but it is for the national parks, which, you know, me and my affinity for the national parks uh, service. So mm -hmm. I was, I was excited about that and it is on Liberty Island. And for those of you who don't know what Liberty Island it is, it is the little island in what is really, really interesting is the way that like the, the island itself is New York. Everything around it is New Jersey. Right. It's really weird. Right. Oh. But, you know, is where the Statue of Liberty is. Mm -hmm. And it is not dealing directly with the statue or the statue's base building, but it is one of the historic Art Deco buildings that support that. And it's probably going to turn into one of multiple phases of, of a project, fingers crossed, because it's really interesting, but we did a site visit and I mean, come on, how, how cool is it to have your project site be at the footsteps of the Statue of Liberty? Right. And so anytime you come out of the building and look up, there she is. And, and what was even cooler is. The office is for the, the park because the park doesn't include it. It isn't just the statue of Liberty or Liberty Island. It's also Ellis Island. Mm. And so all of their offices are on Ellis Island. And so you, we go and we have our like debrief meeting after doing our initial site visit and all that other stuff we're talking about, like, what have you seen? Is there any concerns that are you know bigger than the program and all that other stuff? Mm -hmm. Um, and we're doing all of that in a boardroom on Ellis Island. Come on. Like history, history, nerd, <laughs> history, nerd me. I'm of course sitting there. It's just like, 
Cormac, huh? Uh, oh, oh, sorry. Yeah, I was. Yeah, like, I, I I forgot where I was. Yeah, or I'm just cool. in awe of where I was. Which is just you see all these buildings and you think of the millions of people who come through there, like all of our family histories, right? You know, have right, come right, right. through there, and here we are sitting there, and I'm just like, I just. I don't necessarily know if anybody else was like in awe of just the majesty of just, you know, sitting in an area where, you know, almost every immigrant or at least a good portion of the immigrants who came to the U S came through that immigration point. It's so have you, have you done a bunch of that reading up on the history? Did you already know it? Like where, where cause I don't know. I've well, never yeah. been to Liberty Island. I've never seen, I, I've seen the statue of Liberty off in the distance, but it oh, still hasn't true. been one of the destinations that I've gotten to when I've gone to New York several times. It's still on the list, of course. Oh, yeah. But I'm just wondering like when you're, when you're there, how much did you already know? How much did you have to do to prep to win this project? How much have you done since you've won the project or, or is it just kind of like, you already knew it or what? So, so what's funny is winning the project was the easy part because you you get qualified. I mean, mm -hmm. I, there there is no mystery behind this. It's like you get pre qualified, and then if you get pre qualified, you're on what is called a IDIQ, right? Mm -hmm. It's that. And what does that stand for? Um, I don't. Something I, stands I'm for literally, something. I'm literally blanking right now because I didn't think you were going <laughs> to ask me. Um, but basically, this is acronym. You know, this is a world of acronyms, so yeah. it's always good to kind of. Dispel and what's funny or, is that know, figure out what they are. Now that I'm, you know, now that I'm thinking about it, I, I could have. Uh, it's 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 really easy, and now you've like totally brain. It's gone. Farted the me. Q is for qualify. I'm guessing, <laughs> um, but once you once you do get qualified, and once you do get put on the list, then you basically you're you're already kind of like creating a you're already on the short list for projects that they post. And if you mm -hmm. choose to go after one of those projects, then essentially what you're doing is you're submitting your qualifications and your fees. And if they say, "Okay, Evan, we like your fees." Cormac, we don't really like your fees. We're going to go with Evan. We like the lower fees. Yeah. <laughs> We've talked about this before. Who or, has or, the lowest fee? Well, it's not even just that because, I mean, they're all probably coming in. It's just like, okay, and, and then what What team is there or what are their qualifications? And then you look at, like, the team that's built up and a lot of extensive work, preservation work and structural engineers and all of this other stuff. So to get on the list, and you, you said that's the easy part, but but not well, really, right? Because like you yeah, have to be say. you have to be at a firm that actually has the qualifications yes. to be on a yes. list like that, and so yeah, yeah. It, it may be easy if there is a big reputation and a long history of doing certain project types within the last. I, this is another thing. It's like you yeah. have to have a certain number of pro like project types in the last X number of years. Like it could be five years, so. E easy it, it's wasn't not, really. It's the not right easy, word. easy. But yeah, it's not right. the right word. Right. But but right. but for you, it was easy because you you well, worked I mean, at a, just you worked we, at a firm yeah. that got on the list. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I didn't like. They just asked me what kind of interest if we go after these this type of uh, mm -hmm. of client and this type of work. Do you have any interest? Because I do have pretty extensive background in adaptive reuse and you know, and the parks. Like you just you yeah, love the parks. Like you want to. Yeah. You would love and so, to and participate I was like, in something like yes, that. Yes, yes, and yes. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. and so I, I didn't actually go after, fill out any of the, uh, the forms or come pull together the proposals and all that other stuff to actually get selected. So I am only spitballing at, you know, You're riding the coattails. Yeah, <clears throat> exactly. <laughs> but I'm right. Okay. So, yeah. so the, my question though is, is okay. How much have you, did you prep for or learn since like, like give us an idea of the timeline or of, of your uh, Liberty Island nerdery, like the research side of things or what you're learning and things like that. Oh, because I know, I, mean, I know you do have a huge interest in the family oh, yeah. genealogy side of things and, and the, like that as the gateway into the U S and, and all that you, you, you're fascinated well, with that stuff. Yeah, I am. And, and honestly, there was a lot that I knew and this is unlike you, I've actually been there a couple of times. Uh, okay. and we've gone through Ellis Island. We've done the research to find like some of the family of my side that have come through that, you know, you also know that half of like my family, like the, the Phelan side of the family, they came through Canada. 
and we're Canadians first. But uh, it's all of it is interesting, like how it was used, how the different changes and things. And it was, I was talking to one of the preservation architects that work for the park and we were kind of like sharing knowledge. And it was interesting because like the newest person on the project on, from the park side of things had, was just an encyclopedia of knowledge of the park and of the island and of just like the whole process and stuff. And he was, when I was talking to him and we were actually standing on the roof of this, of the building that we we're doing the preservation and renovations to. And he was just like, I kind of had to, because I, I'm the new guy and they're going to expect the new guy to not know anything. So I'm going to try to like know as much as I can. And as he and I were like walking around the building, I'm like, oh, and you know, like I familiarized myself with the building. I familiarized myself with the grounds. I familiarized myself with like the number of different construction periods on that particular building. And so it was, it was kind of funny that somebody coming new to the project, me and somebody who's new to the, to the national parks, like we're the two newbies and we knew more than most of the people who'd been working on there. Although there was this, oh God, this, this was amazing. The concession, you know, the, the con concessionaire that runs the concessions and, and all of the different things on, on the actual island itself. He, he, he was an older, older gentleman, probably in his like maybe mid seventies. And he, his family has been operating the concessions for 90 years on Liberty Island. Whoa. Yeah. And so he knew family business. Or what? Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Because they don't oh, wow. run. I mean, obviously national parks doesn't run the concessions. They just, they lease the space. They contract oh. them out. Yeah. yeah they contract right. out. And, and they've just, they, they know everything. They know all, they've, they know where all the skeletons are buried, everything else. And so, I you know, and just, just kind of, they're, they're the ones who are able to just like keep it running and keep it going and all of that other stuff. And it was, um, it was just amazing to hear his stories. Like he was, he said that he remembers being on the island when they were building the concession building because it's a, it was night, it was mid forties. And then they did an addition and then they did another addition. He was talking more about the last edition, but he was telling me that his father before basically being a concessions person also worked on like the construction of a couple of the buildings on site. And so like, you know, he's just like, yeah, the, the building was here, but before they opened it up to the public, they realized that it doesn't really fit their needs. It needs to be bigger. And so they basically did an addition onto that. And so like basically five years later before it officially opened to the public, because it was opened or, or it was built at the start of World War II and was. Oh, wow. And yeah, I mean, it, and like to, to listen to like all of like the world events of like what happened, it's like when, you know, when somebody asks, why are there different color stones on the Washington Memorial? And people are like, oh, it must be this or this is just like, no, it was built up to a certain point. And then the civil war happened and then they stopped building. And then that quarry, it's a completely different stone that's going up on the rest of them. And it's just, it's kind of cool to like mark world events or national events yeah. by either construction techniques or building, materials. you know, or building materials or, you know, or so, sourcing because, and logistics. Yeah. <laughs> because even, even the addition switched its structural members from a, it, it was just, it was concrete beams, concrete plank. And then it transitioned just the little addition transitioned to a open web truss. And then the, the, the last edition, which was the 1985 edition, that was open web truss, but it was a completely different, it was a far more updated yeah. version of that one. And Technology so it's like, has changed, right? Yeah. Yeah. Except for somebody decided to use uh, ferrous metals and and there's some rust going. People, people make some mistakes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, it'll turn out. I mean, hey, I mean, my my last house had galvanized pipes. Like, talk about you know. I think I think yeah. we've lived through that here on this podcast, where all of exactly. a sudden I had a 
I had a radiant heat slab and I didn't know why, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> They yeah, did burst. There's been mistakes made, right? <laughs> yeah. uh, well, well. So, so what is the project, man? You've been burying the lead. Can you talk about what the project is? Yeah, yeah. So, um, the uh, 1941 Art Deco. It's kind of Deco modernish. It kind of like straddles it. Um, <laughs> like just, let's just let, take these words, slice them up, slap yeah. them together. There we go. We got um, a, new, a new style. We'll, we'll call it Deco concessions building. Yeah, on mm -hmm. and. It was built in an era where they were not ready. So they said that the peak for the year during when it was constructed was 20,000 people. Mm -hmm. They can get that in a day. Yeah, so, so if you can just imagine so a capacity, a, the, that they yeah, so capacity. Is, oh my gosh. They've got, they've, they've got a temporary toilet facility, which is temporary oh slash gosh. permanent toilet facility. I mean, it's, it's just like schools that we've worked on too, yeah. right? Where it's like you work on some project that was not designed for current modern, let's just call it modern capacities in yeah. any way, yeah. because there was no oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. thought of how different things would be in the future. Like you're always no, kind of no, just designing things for the current state. And, and I mean, we try really hard to, and you've talked about a recent project <laughs> where you're future proofing and it's like. Uh, yeah. uh, you just kind of roll your eyes. Yeah, you just did it. Exactly. You just literally exactly. did what I was saying at the same time. Exactly. It's like you, that's that pe people want that right. kind of insurance or reassurance that that can actually happen. And it's like you can't, nobody has the crystal ball here. No, no. And when you kind of hope that construction technologies, and you've seen it, I mean, you've worked on renovation projects from, I, I, I saw one just on one project alone. That was built in you know, the original one was 1894. And then there was an addition at 1898. Then there was another addition at 1905. And then the building next door was 1905. And then there was a 1930s addition. And then a 1930s addition to that one. Then there was a 1978 edition. Then there was a 1989 edition. And then there's, then, you know, comes Cormac and he's connecting the two buildings together, renovating them completely. And you know, having to deal with part of a building that has foundations, part of a building that has masonry mass at the bottom that is literally just the, the wall stops at 10 inches below grade. And, and you're enough. just like, it was uh, good enough yeah. at the time. The building yeah. has stood and, the test of and you, time. And you in look at all like, as well. Exactly. And you look at the different types of, and then you realize that at one point in time, there was a fire in the building and guess what they did? They left all of the burnt timbers there, you know, and all of those other things. And you, oh you know, it this was is what makes these things so interesting, right? I, like this is what I makes honestly, a city like New York City. Yeah. Like, so, so we, we've, oh, we've mm -hmm, seen yeah. the, the news of like the line and, you know, these right. various mega cities that are going to be from scratch and, and, you know, all of the affordances that could potentially come along with that. But mm -hmm. there's something so interesting in the building up of an urban area over time and dealing with those constraints and what's been there before. Like they, right. they got there first. Now we have to work around this stuff. Right. And I think right. that there's something so interesting about that as a, a problem solving in scheme and that we go the, through. And that's the shame of these cities who, you know, basically like during urban renewal and all these other ones, basically kind of clear cut their history right. and, you know, put up new. It's just like, oh, it's, it's less important that we, we keep this. And, and thank goodness New York wasn't one of those because what was kind of interesting is our hotel was down in the financial district, right near the battery, right near the, the ferries that go to either Staten Island or wherever else. Right. And um, we're walking around and just a couple of blocks away still stands a tavern, which is still used today as a restaurant and tavern, mm -hmm. where George Washington gave his farewell speech to his troops. And there's a plaque there. Oh, there's a, there's a plaque. That, oh, yeah. There's a, there's a plaque <laughs> there's there. There's a lot of George and, Washington plaques on yeah. the East Coast. <laughs> but I mean, the, the, but, the, but the building is still there and just, just to see like the the character of this and then the shiny little buildings around it. And you're only like just a few blocks away from the World Trade Center. And but yeah, you know, there's the that Memorial one and all that. storefront that's just tucked yeah. in there. And it's no, always it's, been there. Yeah. 
right? Exactly. Like, and it's, it's, just, it's, be, it's been there before we've been there. You know, yeah, like yeah. It'd be, before we as it the It didn't get the tucked country. in at all. It was just yeah. surrounded, right? <laughs> it, was, it was engulfed. It was engulfed. Yeah. Engulfed. There you yeah. go. <laughs> and, and that was so funny is like, it was, it's like a couple of little blocks that are like that with these old, these old buildings that have been there since the early 1700s. And because you're in this cavern of all of these high rises and stuff, and you come walk around and you come into that space, it's kind of magical because it's like, yeah. it, it literally is, why am I blanking on the name of the alley? The, was it Tycon Alley? Um, uh, in Harry Potter, know. I, you know yeah, that I'm not a I'm not a huge Harry Potterer. So. Well, James, uh, but yeah, <laughs> but anyway, there's but there was just this. It was it was almost like this little magical world that kind of lived outside of like everybody's like consciousness because it was like mm -hmm. you know it's there, it's always been there, yeah. but it was just it's a hidden it was gem. Just like, I was yeah, like, thank yeah. goodness this is still there because honestly, as many times as we've gone to New York, yeah, you know, I never went down that far to the water to the tip of Manhattan in Battery Park and never really explored around there. And for me, it was just kind of exciting mm -hmm. to like see the fabric of, again, the timeline of New York kind of mm -hmm. developing from like that area, like the down at the at the very bottom where the battery, where the, the fort is and all of these other things. And, and then just to kind of like see this evolution of a city that's become what it is today, which is crazy big and crazy yeah. busy right i i heard this i was i was on a panel and one of the comments that was made it was about technology and architecture and we were talking about various technologies and stuff <laughs> and one of the comments that was made talking about what's coming next and you know everybody always wants to know what's next and um, <laughs> but i thought one of the really interesting comments was that there will be a time, and it, so this was kind of a proclamation by, by another panelist, there will be a time when there won't be new projects. It'll just be reuse. You know, it, it's, we're going to go back. We're going to do adaptive reuse. We're gonna, and, and I thought that was, I, I, I actually kind of second-guessed that because I'm thinking, and, and, I get, and part of the context to the answer that they gave was that all of the software that we use now forces us to start from scratch it forces us to start from there's no good way oh, yeah. to capture and, and of course there are ways to capture existing conditions and context and things like that but there isn't a good way to start quickly with that information because right so many more projects that we're doing nowadays are adaptive reuse or renovations or you know the various versions of that and and so you have to do a bunch of work to get to the point at which you can begin doing your work on the oh, project. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And 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 then and then the statement was made that at some point we're not even going to have new projects to do. Like we have so much building stock, and and this is where I started to question it because I've also heard conflicting information or, or proclamations about how we need to double the size of the the building stock that exists in the world today by twenty fifty, right? Because of populations and so and so it's like well which one is it <laughs> and, yeah. and maybe i don't know when those timelines or when those those two lines on the graph cross and, and it becomes you know something different than it is but um anyway i thought that was kind of interesting and i and i'm curious what you think about that because now you're starting a project where you are taking an existing historical building that has a ton of history mm-hmm and you have to do a ton of work to get to a point where you can begin to do the work that you need to do to uh, do what you're going to do to the project. And so yeah. I'm one, I'm curious how you guys are doing that because I've been through that process before. And I would say like, Ooh. I would probably approach it very differently now than we did back then. But technology has changed significantly in this respect to capturing existing conditions. Um, so I'm just curious how you guys are going about that. So there's the next steps, which is when we start to pull in the technology to like really do a lot of accurate depiction of the existing conditions. And right now, this is a, a pre-designed phase where what we're essentially doing is saying, okay, we've gone on a site visit. We've documented a bunch of things and tried, tried to pull a bunch of information, historical documents and drawings and, and all of the different upgrades and stuff that and maintenance 
programs that they've done throughout the years and sift through all of that to see what's been going on with the actual building throughout time. Makes sense. To, Makes to sense just, of it all. Yeah, to like just a, create a just picture like, of... Yeah, yeah right. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really just doing all of that to create a picture of what do we have? Because then we can start to say what we can do, but we've got to really understand what do we have first. And, and we have to do this on every single project in, oh, yeah, yeah. Some, in some fashion. It could yes. just be property lines. It could be a flat ground plane. It could oh, be yeah, yeah. surrounding buildings and streets and right-of-ways and utilities and surveys and all that stuff. But it, it is kind of interesting. Like, like this is something else. You you have to in detail, and I'm sure there's yeah. going to be aspects of it that you're really going to have to document. Oh, it's going to be, yeah. Yeah. And what's interesting is like how you, you talked about, we have the technology to document this, and we do. And I think about the first time that I had done a historic project in Revit when Revit was in its infancy, and so was my knowledge about how to use it and everything else. And <laughs> perfect storm, right? <laughs> we, yeah. And, and, the, and none of, and at the time, you're right, like the software, like Revit, it was designed for new buildings, it wasn't designed for historic buildings and stuff. So none of yeah. the details, none of the cornices, none of the moldings, none of the, it none was, of that it's stuff really existed. To do all that, we right? had to create every bit of that in, mm -hmm. you know, in detail and draw every bracket, every copper conductor head and downspout. I mean, these were things that just yeah. didn't exist. There was no families for them. There were no people creating families for them. And now, because there's people who do like reproduction work and all of this other stuff that because Revit is Revit or BIM is not going away, there are people out there that says, hey, if I want to get in front of the, the architect, I need to get this product into something that they can use, or yeah. they're going to continue to con overlook me as a supplier. So I need to get it out to them so they, they know and they can use it and say, hey, I specified the Evan Troxel copper colonial embossed, oh. yeah, embossed That's eagle. Now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> My side hustle. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> there you go. So, and it's so, you the know, Evan the Troxel colo uh, copper embossed colonial eagle. Yeah, <laughs> colonial company. Eagle. yeah exactly. <laughs> there you go. Um, anything colonial eagle. We can make it. We could do it. <laughs> well, and, thinking about like laser scanning and photogrammetry, you know, like there's right, a, there tech, right. there's tech that'll do this. And I think what's interesting is like these old buildings have, they've moved, they've shifted, they've cracked, they've peeled, they've things have fallen mm -hmm. off. Uh, you know, the weather's taken a toll. Uh, things weren't built perfectly straight. I mean, when when you start from scratch, you draw everything in 90 degree angles for the most oh, yeah. part right oh, yeah. and i've lived oh. and you you as well have lived in houses where that is not the case and that and that's the simplest example um yeah. and, and so they go out and they document uh you'll, you'll send a team out to laser scan this building to get the as built into you know it's a point cloud that goes into revit and then you start to trace over that or you may have the same consultant who you send out there to do the scanning do a scan to bim kind of conversion Mm -hmm. I've been through that process before where the consultant modeled it so exactly that you couldn't dimension to your new walls, right? Because Revit complains if yeah. you have one wall that's slightly off axis and it'll tell you it's oh gosh, happy to yes. complain about that, right? Oh, and yeah. then you Excellent. try to dimension to your new wall and you can't do it. And so so then you have to start negotiating with the scan to BIM people about how how you want that stuff. And, and and this is the overhead of dealing with this kind of technology, right? It's like, well, I need it to be usable, but I also need it to be accurate. And so then you start to do trade-offs internally of, of okay, we're, we're just going to make all the walls straight so that we can put dimensions on them versus mm -hmm. get accuracy. And and it's it's this this constant negotiation is happening throughout the project when you are dealing with old renovations and remodels and rehabs and all of right. those kinds of things. Yeah. Now I remember one time on that multi-era project, I was just rattling off all of the different dates. And so all of the documentation that they gave us, all of the survey information and everything else that they were, that they had given us had shown that 
the two buildings that we were connecting together were perfectly parallel to each other. And so we and knew and, they weren't, right? <laughs> I mean, you know, there was no there's, way like, what are the chances? <laughs> true. Well, so we did have to go off on some assumptions because there were certain things that yes. they, as a school board who didn't want to pay for extra surveys because they already had surveys done and these surveys should still be good, right? The buildings haven't moved. So we they don't be want good. new information. We don't and, want conflicting new information. Yeah. 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 And so <laughs> when we had, so we designed everything, we detailed everything and everything was the document wise, like all of like the, the expansion joint between the buildings and all of the other stuff were different. Yeah. I mean, we're on in the document. Then fast forward to construction and yeah. the steel guy comes out and they do their own survey of that because yeah. they're verifying their there's everything. Verifying field. Yep. And and so exactly <laughs> they verified in field. And so what did they find out? That the building was four feet out of skew from each other. Wow. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And yeah. and by the way, that the we could either sacrifice our egress corridor, the program space which of a classroom, or slightly generous sized egress stairs. Something there we'd have go. to give, and guess what? That was the one. That yeah. was the one. It's like, yeah, we. <laughs> that was the we, one. I, I, you have to I, choose I, the least worst option. Exactly. Right, in exactly. times like those, yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh! And it was like it was this. Uh, I always use this as an example of we can't, we can't not push for new current surveys of Accurate everything surveys because right. yeah. you know if you're saying, oh yeah, this uh, 1992. Survey, it yeah. should be good. It's 1992 technology. We can get more exact now. Um, yeah. You kind of just want to know it all up front. I mean, you, you yeah. really need to know so that you can make, hopefully, you know, smart decisions yeah. about the yeah, trade-offs. Exactly. Because you do yeah. have to make, you do have to do that. That's and, the entire architectural process in a nutshell. It's just yeah. trade-offs. Right. <laughs> yeah. So you guys yeah. are going to be renovating this building and bringing it up to more modern standards to handle higher capacities, um, more technology in the the food service, bathroom, stuff like that. We're in the stage of determining what level of renovations we oh, can okay. and can't do. Um, so there's going to be like yeah. a whole menu and then there's going to be budget yes. items attached you, to those. And then there, you're going yeah, to play the well, game of like, here's see, what we can afford to but do. But see, there's, there's, the, there's the menu. But then there's the percentage of alterations that you do based off of that. And mm -hmm. the higher the percentage, you get to 50% or over, you're, um, mm -hmm. you're going to be triggered into doing a full code it's revision. Changed, right. And right, right, right. I'm going to tell you right now, this building ain't going to, there's just, there's so many spaces that just is incapable of meeting code. So, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. it'll, it'll be a little bit more strategic. The biggest, honestly, the biggest thing is that the, the limestone panels that make up the facade. So it's a, a, a veneered wall. And it was very indicative of that type of construction at that period where you'd have the, the masonry wall and then you would have the stone veneer with zero to no land, like air gap between. Mm -hmm. And you'd have your brick ties and everything else. And then, of course, mm -hmm. what, is, what is the coping? The coping is a stone coping, not metal flashing or anything like that to separate it. So to prevent right, any right, water right. from weeping through there. And I don't know if you, you might, but I don't know if, but stone like limestone is a bit porous, right? Mm. You know, water gets, <laughs> and then it gets back behind there. And then you, I've you done know, the rock climbing on the limestone. Yeah, it, has exactly. a lot of, it had a lot of streaking. Yeah. 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 And you know, and so water like, it just comes out where it wants to come out. Yeah. So there's a lot of delamination. You know, it's, it's very similar to, you know, you see this detail used way too often and you see th that if you just would have done like, there's, there's gotta be flashing in there. There's gotta be a separation between the coping and the water infiltration into you. The, I mean, because it was grouted in, it was, it was weird. It was, it was, it's weird, but it was failing. And so that was really where this, where the project starts is like, we need, we want to, there are things we do need to fix from the renovation side, the preservation side. And preservation then there side, are, right. and then there are things that we 
or saying, okay, we, you need to do this because of this, that, and the other. And so like <laughs> they've got this one egress door in the basement storage that you look on the plants, it's this nice clean opening, right? <laughs> you stand in front of it and it looks and like somebody, reality. <laughs> it looks like somebody just chewed through the wall because all of the, it's, it's like, in, instead of looking like a, you know, a nice rectangle, with hard edges and stuff and a lintel over it, right? For yeah. you come through and it's just like, it's kind of like somebody like, you know, bushed through it and the rebar's hanging down and you got to duck so you don't get hoping that you, you know, you're updated on your tetanus shot. You don't get scalped. <laughs> you, exactly. You don't get scalped. <laughs> and, you know, and then like the, the um, jams are the same way and you can see like exposed, exposed steel and all of that other stuff. And you just like. A literal uh, hack job. Oh, a yeah. literal hack job. Yeah. And you're just right. like, yeah, this is, so this is why the kind of like doing kind of like, like visit, uh, the, the photo survey, like the, not just photo survey, the, the like LIDAR oh, yeah, the scan, and or the, yeah, the, scan, or, the point, the, 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 scan, the point yeah. cloud scanning. Yes. Thank you. Um, where that is necessary because those are the things that you can still verify, okay, yeah, there's an opening, but n now you can verify what that opening is, how it actually looks. Because <laughs> this gonna is have the to kind of thing where, it. yeah, well, you're going to have to, you send out the intern with a tape measure and a, and a, a clipboard, <laughs> right? And, and they can just go measure it and take some photos and you'll be good, right? And it's a close, no, yeah, it's yeah. not a, it's not a long trip to get, you know, out on the island from, mm -hmm. from the office. Right. So yeah. it's no big deal to send them back a few times to get those extra photos and oh, yeah. whatever's needed because they didn't they didn't look in the right direction. They didn't they didn't measure right or whatever. Or, <laughs> how come these dimensions aren't yeah. adding up? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> where we're at now is we're going to we're basically taking all of the documents that we have, trying to verify the dimensional accuracy, building kind of a base model to start with to then. And the thing was, is that I had to like walk through the one of some of the people who are, are working on the project and building the model right now, they didn't go out with us. And so they're like, I, I can't make any sense of like what this building is or what this wall should be. I'm like, oh, well that, I was like, oh, that's two walls. <laughs> we and did like, that we, for this really old project where yeah. we just took all the laptops out there and we were just building the model in place because it, it because of that. It, yeah. Well, but I this think was before point cloud scanning and this so, well, before 3D scanning. I, well, even that I did kind of like suggest doing a little bit of old schools. Let's build, let's build it the way that we see it in all of the documents. And then let's get back out there and do a lot of verification. What really like. Um, exactly. Work through like, what does this mean? What does that mean? And kind of point cloud. You know, I would not do a project ever without yeah. a, a, a 3D scan nowadays. If oh yeah. yeah if you're yeah. going well, to be yeah, building on totally. an existing building, because because you get the photographs for free with that. There's all these 360 yeah. degree spherical photos. You can look everywhere. I mean, it, it sucks when there's a bunch of junk in the room for sure. And there oh, usually sure. is just... a bunch of junk in the room, and you can't see into all the corners, and you can't see where Tons. all the outlets are, and you can't see where a lot of stuff is. But you have more information than you would ever get the old way of doing it, right? And I, and yeah. and you don't have to send anybody back five times because. I, you really do get a legitimate, accurate representation of what's there with Don't all the junk in it. Call. I think I might still have on my phone because you had suggested kind of a point cloud. Wasn't it through Rhino? The 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 iRhino 3D. If you yeah, if yeah, you're on their beta, which you can get on for free, you can get their uh, room scan. Um, yeah, yeah, and it does point cloud scanning, but that's really for objects, not for spaces. So the room scan does rooms. And then there's Polycam, which is a great app right. for this kind of thing if you have a LiDAR phone. Um, but it's not like a true point cloud scan. I mean, it's 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 good enough for some things, but it's not like a real, real point cloud scan. That was it. It was it was Polycam that you hit because I, I do have. And yeah. um, I remember scanning the room I'm in right now. And yeah. I was just like, look how cool this is. And it so. It's cool. Yeah. And, and those and are in your pocket. things. And it's right here. <laughs> It's right there. But it's in my hand right now. Um, yeah. But, but yeah, and, and it's just, it's kind of cool. It's there. It's amazing because those, so there, 
Even with that, though, there are some things that you're never going to find in a historic building. Here we are, we're sitting there, and it, I had to get up. So, like, we went into what was, at one point in time, an old restroom that is now turned into an electrical room and partial mechanical room because having a water heater and um, electrical panels in the same room are a good idea. You do um, what you got to do. That's what yeah. you do. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we were looking and people are like, oh, okay. And then that, that's, this is the wall. And, oh, is it just a, a concrete or a concrete block back up behind the, the tile? Who knows? Yeah. Who knows? And, well, so then I, you know, I, we, we get, we gain access to a ladder and like, kind of like crawl up there and how like in electrical rooms, they like to put the plywood up on the walls. Well, they had this plywood kind of like standing off of the wall. So I could, could kind of see in between them. And they had, they basically, and nowhere in any documents does it actually say that they did this, but mm -hmm. somebody decided to completely open up. So they had a, a, a small window on one side and then nothing, there was no, but they opened up the entire wall and then put in basically probably some steel angles and a, um, a plate to kind of like stabilize the wall and hold the angles in place. And then they just infilled with, with CMU, but there's no rationale on why they did that. It's just mm -hmm. like, and nobody knows, it's and what they nobody had. could figure that. Yeah. Well, I mean, nobody knows why they actually removed it. It wasn't, mm -hmm. there was no reason to remove it. And, and it's part of a sandwich. Built but, yeah. Because exactly. as built are a luxury. Nobody wants to pay for yeah. that. It's like, it's done. No, I'm just going to use the space. I don't have extra money laying around yeah. to do that process. Right. So. I don't know. I've, I, maybe I've, I've uh, been a little bit spoiled because almost every project that I've worked on, uh, they've done as built. Well, I don't at some know. point they kind of became contractual, right? And yeah. but but early it was always an add True. on. Back back then, no, 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 yeah, day. yeah, yeah. Right. Back then, I mean, <laughs> the the one um, adaptive reuse project that we did at Wash U in St. Louis, they just. Uh, they built a building over basically the remains of other buildings and they had documents who said that, yeah, we demoed this building and, and that building. And so there's nothing there. It's just free and clear. Come, oh, yeah. you know, and then of course, here we are, we're excavating and what are we doing? We're running into abandoned walls and all of right. these other things below grade. And they're like, oh yeah. They swept it under the rug is what they did yeah. right there. Well, what was, what was funny is they're like, oh Yeah. I think we've got drawings that show that we um, in, abandoned in place these. Like We um, like those drawings. How yeah. about <laughs> Thanks for waiting until construction to inform to us tell. that. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah, or, nothing, or, nothing rang that bell earlier when we were talking about this project. <laughs> or, or, a <laughs> yeah, or, a, or a cross. So there was like a utility tunnel underneath that we were building over the top of. And so we knew that one perfectly fine. But apparently there was a tunnel over the tunnel that everybody <laughs> neglected to tell us. And, you know, of course, here cool we are. Find. Yeah. And then as, as we were Wait, doing dem, yeah, as we were doing demo work for it, for, to make way for this new plaza and stuff in this big terraced stairs and everything else, we discover, it's like, Hey, by the way, did you know that there's a tunnel that goes perpendicular to the other tunnel that we knew was there that was a service tunnel from the loading dock to the library and then there was another one which was just a utilities tunnel between the two but they just kind of like dug underneath it and then it's just like like I, th I think i remember that like you you think you remember it but you think you could have remembered it a little sooner i think you could have <laughs> told us yeah yeah well, so, so you're in so, the honeymoon phase of a new project. You're excited about the yeah, possibilities. I am. You These know, projects it's, it's, never go... It, it, what you will finally get is nothing like what anybody thinks right now. Right, that, that's how this is the nature of these kind of projects. <laughs> true, I, true. When, when this project is over, I mean, it would be great to do a comparison of... Uh, and, because I don't know that we ever do this. It's like, we just look forward, yeah. right? <laughs> True. But there's like all of these dreams and visions of what could be and questions and more questions than answers, right? And then and then there's like, 
if we do this, it changes the path. And if we do this, it changes the path. And if we do this, right. it changes the path. And there's so much path changing along the way mm. that it turns oh, yeah. out to be something completely different than what anybody oh, yeah. thought yeah. it was going to be. And this is what architects are actually really good at. Yeah, because I always ask or try to ask the, what if we do this? What if we do that? Think about this. And I... Today we had another adaptive reuse project with the building for Hopkins. We were in a meeting talking about some changes for mechanical systems and going from one system to another already post-construction. And we're changing our, changing the use of certain areas, which leads to more, more supply demand. And so we're like, okay, well, we, the current capacity of the. You're not talking about we've already got. <laughs> no. So we're, we're, Supply we're talking. Supply demand is, yeah, that's yeah. a new, that's a new thing for yeah. some people. Just air, air conditioning. Like, there you go. You know, we designed it first, you know, for an open office space, not for like conference rooms and stuff. And now they're thinking about doing conference rooms and, lo you know, higher capacity spaces and things like that. And, and so we were coming up with multiple options of what we can do. Some of them have major impacts on the program spaces that they're looking at doing and some have like minimal or no impact on the program spaces. And so then we're creating just this menu of, it's just like, okay, here's the least impactful to here's the most impactful. And mm -hmm. some of those spaces they're going to shell out, but we are going to suggest that they still build them out so that we, um, and just the thinking about it's just like, I want to tell them as much mm -hmm. information as I can now mm -hmm. about the worst case scenario. Mm -hmm. Because if they go that route, which they probably in a way should, but if they go that route, everything that they do to those floors in the future is going to be affected by this decision. And so they need to know, it's like, okay, if you do this, this is like, what are your ramifications? Yeah. And, and, and I think all that out ahead of time yeah. is yeah. yeah tricky. And I think that is a good, that is a great gift that architects have is the... Mm -hmm understanding of the decisions that you make and how they can impact the future, you know, future use, future planning, future program, future renovations, future additions later on down the road. I mean, there's all sorts of different things. I mean, hell, this, this building has, um, increased structure, uh, at a certain location because they're anticipating in the future across the street they were going to build another uh, medical building, a medical high-rise building across from it, but they wanted to put a bridge between the two. Well, mm. we designed for so the bridge. So you're ready for that. Yeah, so we're, <laughs> ready, for, we're ready for a bridge. Yeah. It's all these crazy things that you just think about in advance, and some they may or may not ever use it, but that structure is ready, willing, ready and able to accept a, a we'll bridge. We'll build the suit. Yeah, build the suit. Exactly, exactly. Awesome. Well, I'm excited for your new honeymoon phase. I, honeymoon phase on a project doesn't last forever, but hopefully this project uh, it pays. pays but off you know, for these you. are. I'm excited for you. And the good and the cool cool thing is, is that these are sort of short burn projects for each of the different phases, and then it's kind of like onto another one. And and, and just these like discovery pro, you know, the discovery phase of like, ooh, it, it's almost like treasure hunting. <laughs> You know, <laughs> exactly, exactly. Totally, totally. You know, and, and that just, you know, I mean, I needed a little bit of, ooh, in, in my, yeah. uh, you know, projects mm. lives. Totally. Totally. Cool, man. Well, can't wait to get the updates as we, as we move forward here. That'll be fun. All right, all right. Uh, I'll be happy to share them to you because, you know, whether there's a NDA or not, I think I just disclosed everything. So you just broke it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right. Well, <laughs> thank you for your service. <laughs> See ya.